everyone. I'm on my way to a new shooting location outside of Washington, D.C. And I'm yammering away about it to the camera with my mic transmitter turned off. Wouldn't be a drumming video without a glitch, I guess. You'll notice soon that I recorded in one channel instead of mono. Oh well, enjoy the video anyway. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a little bit since I last shot. I'm still in DC helping out my uh, daughter. So while I'm here, I haven't had much opportunity to go out and shoot, but uh, today I've come out to a park in uh, Virginia, just a mile or so south of uh, Great Falls. Whoops, just a mile or so, <laughs> just a mile or so south of Great Falls to uh, a location that I haven't seen before. Uh, it looked interesting from Google Maps, Google Earth, and hopefully that's going to be the case. You know, right now I'm heading on a trail that leads towards the, oops, towards the Potomac River. And if I can get there without falling down and busting my ass, uh, maybe somewhere either along this stream or actually at the river itself, I have a chance to shoot some interesting uh, landscape, maybe a, uh, whoops. I'm gonna have to put this camera down pretty soon. But maybe a little interesting scene along the river here, along the stream here, uh, before I get to the Potomac River itself. So let's uh, keep going and see what I can find. Well, right now, the light is not my friend. It's, uh, it was forecast to be very cloudy today, uh, but instead, got pretty much bluebird skies. It looks like the clouds are not gonna move in until this afternoon sometime, so that's not good news for me. Uh, as you can see, even though it's the middle of February here in Washington, D.C., there's no snow. In fact, it's been an unusually warm winter. It was in the 60s Fahrenheit just a couple of days ago, and it'll probably be back there again in a couple of more days. So nothing is around except brown. And uh, there's really not a lot to shoot right now, at least not right, not so far. But uh, I'm hoping that I will come across something somewhere soon. So I think I've got a composition. I've got a cascade here that's running from right to left but the, uh, the way that it's running, the way these, these bolters are set up, is the, wa the water is kind of going up this way. Oops, let me put this on manual. The water is kind of running up this way. So, you, gotta, you know, so it's kind of a nice leading line rather than, uh, and rather than just looking from right to left. I've, I took the exposure manually, or uh, by hand, I should say, before coming up here, because as you can see, my standing, my stance, and my tri tripod setup is somewhat tenuous. So I'm going to try to avoid as much uh, contact with the camera as I can. One thing I do have on here, besides the polarizing filter, is a six-stop ND filter, which is going to bring my exposure down to about six tenths of a second. And uh, as far as the polarizer, the point of that is try to remove some of the excess reflection. So you see, I move the, to the polarizer around. You see what it does in terms of taking water, reflections away from the water, as opposed to emphasizing the reflections. So I want it to be somewhere in the midpoint, midpoint, but taking most of the reflection out. Now, the only thing that's working, right, working against me right now is that since, my, since I set up, the sun has come back out. There were some clouds moving through, and I'm going to have to wait for the clouds to come back to come back because I don't want the light to be too harsh. But once I do, I'm going to take a series of images. Um, I might wind up cropping it to a square, well, but we'll see what the final product is after, uh, you know, right after this. In fact, I'm going to set the camera, camera up vertically. I think the vertical composition is probably going to work even best because it's going to get a little bit of the woods that are on the hillside on the other side. So stay tuned and I'm going to take my exposures now and you'll see what I get. 
By the time the clouds filtered the sun a little, it was right in my face. I had to shade the lens with my hand to avoid glare, but I knew I could drop that out later. I moved over to my left for a second image with the light slightly more sidelit. I might like the lines formed by the water better here. Which do you prefer? Let me know in the comments. Well, I have to be thankful for a hiker who gave me uh, a tip to this location. I'm not standing on top of a bluff overlooking this uh, stream, and this is probably the, the peak point of the Cascade. I, as you can see here, the uh, river is kind of curving around here from the, you know, from this way here, and I've really got some nice water action over here and over here, and I'm probably going to wind up taking my long lens, my 100 to 500, to get some detail images. The first I want to uh, get a wider view of this scene. Uh, I usually don't shoot much wider than 24 very regularly, 24 millimeters. But in this case, just to get this wider view, well, actually, I put in my 14 to 35, and I wound up still cropping into 28 millimeters. And that's because of the sky, which is kind of high, kind of blue, and I don't really want it in the shot. So even though I switched lenses, I still wind up at 28 millimeters. So I'm going to take a series of bracketed shots because there's a lot of depth of field from the front to the back. Uh, so for this first wide shingle, white wide shingle, wide shot, I've got my polarizer, uh, polarizing filter in to cut down on the glare. I've got a six-stop ND filter, uh, and that's giving me an exposure of F10, half a second, and ISO 500, now, uh, 400 rather. And don't be afraid sometimes of using 400 if you wind up getting the shutter speed that you want, especially with today's modern camera. This R5 is very, uh, very easily uh, produced an ISO 400 image without much noise, and what noise there is is easy to clean up and post. So I'm going to take this first image right now, uh, setting up for the, actually there's a little rock over here I may or may not include in the uh, composition. Got my two second timer on. And it's got about the right water flow that I want. So I'm going to take a few more, and I might take one more uh, image without the uh, ND filter in order to get um, some water detail in a fat with a faster shutter speed, and then blend that in. It'll just kind of enhance the the, the long exposure for the uh, for the water. And uh, what I come up with, you're going to see right here. As you can see, I've now mounted my 100 to 500 on here. And there's actually a couple of good things about this particular lens, the RF 100 to 500. One is that it's got the same filter thread um, as my other main lenses, the, uh, the 14 to 35 and the 24 to 105. Those are my other two main lenses, and they've all got the same filter thread. So it was very easy to swap off my ND filter set up from the one lens to the other. Now, the bad thing about this lens is that it is not have an Arca Swiss compatible tripod put, so I had to put on an adapter to mount it. You know, it's a minor thing, but it's something. Anyway, so I have zoomed in now to the one section of Cascade that's right here. It's the like, kind of the, probably the, the most dynamic part. And as you can see right now, I'm, at, I'm, I'm only about a 500, uh, 100 millimeters. And um, I've got my, uh, my uh, polarizing filter on here to cut down the reflections. You see what will happen to the reflections and highlights as I turn it around. I don't want to cut all the reflections out, but I want to have some of the, you know, some of the water details visible, but I don't want it like, like that. I really want it more like this. So I'm now capturing some of the uh, action at the bottom of the, of the cascade. I might change the angle of the camera just a little bit like so. I think that might be a little better. So I'm now going to, uh, take my first image. Actually, I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to need the focus stack there, so I'm probably just going to stop down to, oh, actually I'm at F9, which is probably the sharpest area anyway. I don't think I'm going to need to focus stack this because I'm at the, you know, there's not that much depth of field at this distance. And then I'm going to come in a little bit closer 
for some more detailed shots. And whatever I come up with, you're gonna see right here. I really love the play of water over the rocks in this scene. But doesn't that rock in the middle look like the Rancor from Return of the Jedi? I made two versions of this last image. In the monochrome version, I really pushed contrast and luminance to go for an abstract look. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer. I had already recorded my outro and was about to leave when a black vulture across the ravine caught my eye. These scavengers aren't most people's favorite bird and this one was covered in other vultures poop, but to me, it's still a fascinating creature and I had to shoot it. Yeah, so about the outro that I filmed just before the vulture footage. I might have kind of did sort of delete it by mistake out of the field. I was doing some uh, thumbnail selfies because that's what one does and there was a take I didn't like so I deleted what I thought was the bad take and in fact I had deleted my outro. So here I am now days after the fact asking you that if you liked what you just saw and you want to see more of it please give me a like and a subscription and uh, hit the comments and notification bell that's right down here to your, uh, below so that the next time I upload anything, you're gonna see it right away. And I would appreciate any comments and certainly any likes or even dislikes that you have about the video or about the channel in general. And all that stuff really helps my channel grow. I thank you for your indulgence. Hopefully I'll have a relatively mistake-free video the next time I upload. Until the next time, see you later.